what would you consider to be your biggest failure? I know you've had a few. We've all had a few. What, yeah, do, you reckon, what do you reckon the biggest one is? So I think failure is actually a really dangerous word. Okay. Because failure to me means that you've got regrets. True. And the way that I live my life is with no regrets. If something, if I do something wrong, and I've done loads of things wrong, and we've had failures as a business. And, it, you know, you look at football, mistake, man, mistake. football manager live and then football manager online. Now, I, I, I want to stick on this point if, if I can. So football manager live and football manager online, they lost the company and they lost Sega money doing those projects. Um, but as long as you learn from that, yeah. You shouldn't regret it, and therefore it's not a failure. As long as you learn and you grow and um, and don't do the same thing again, um, then then it's not a failure. To me, we we haven't failed as a business because we're still here. Yeah. You know, 28, 29 years down the line, we're still here. We were bought by Sega, yet the two founders and and me, the other director of the studio, are still at the studio. Around 25 of the 35 people who were there 15 years ago when we sold the studio are still at the studio. Um, we provide careers for people. We don't provide jobs. We're growing. So sure, we've made mistakes along the way. Um, everyone does. But as long as you learn from those mistakes, you can actually grow from them. So if I look at mistakes, Definitely Football Manager Live and Football Manager Online, but I wouldn't change it for the world yeah. because we learned from it and we got some really great technology from it. Um, I think there were a lot of mistakes in the way that we dealt with IDOS, which were which were also the way that they dealt with us. Um, you know, I look back on some of the emails. <laughs> I look back on some of the emails now and just think, Christ, if, if I got an email like that, pff, yeah. I, I would explode. Um, but then I look back at some of the emails they were sending to us and it was like, okay, basically, yeah, it, it, it was not a healthy relationship. Um, there are things that I've done in my life that, that were definitely mistakes, but again, I, I don't regret them um, because they helped, they helped shape me. Um, and I'm glad you said that because it wasn't a trick question. It was a genuine question. But the more you talk about that stuff, the more I think, you know what, that's exactly the same attitude I've got. People say, you know, I mean, I've had some real blows, but you, I think that resilience word is underplayed. And, and it's it, it, what I don't want it to be is, is, is to be a discussion around you've got to be really smashed around in order to sort of become tough because that doesn't do anyone any good. But what you've got to have is you've got to have a support network around you. And that's important. We probably, those who've got it, don't realise half the time they've got it until they see those without it. And, you know, the, the support network can be, you know, a family. It can be friends. It can be the, the first job you had. It can be mentors and things like that. Um, but I think you've got to be confident enough without being arrogant to understand that not everything you're going to do is going to be termed successful. Um, if it's hurt people and it's made people really unhappy and mis miserable, that's not a cool thing to do. Um, um, and I, I think you know me well enough, Andy, that I've, I've never stitched anyone up. In no, you, you, you're, you're straight as a die when it comes to business. So, um, so yeah, you know, if there are people out there who, who get their kicks from stitching people up, then, then they should have regrets. Yeah. Um, but for me, I've always, I don't know, I try, I try and do the right thing. Don't always succeed, but I try. Yeah. And I, I mean, kind of interesting also, just listening to you talk about SI, you know, Sports Interactive. I've got a great love for the company. I can remember driving down to in my little car down to a place on the South Coast called Bournemouth to knock on the door of this house that these three blokes had sort of rented, it turned out. And one was called uh, Oliver, one was called Paul, another bloke called Andy. And uh, and they were making, they'd been told by their publisher, Domark, that they really weren't, they didn't want to have the Italian version, Serie A version of, of what was championship manager at the time. At the time, it was early 90s. Channel 4 had got the license to broadcast Italian football on a Sunday. Football fans like Miles and I 
love any football, so we're kind of lapping that up. Much slower game than the English game, but but great. And these guys were making, an, you know, championship manager Italia. And they were told by the publishers, no, we don't want that. It's just way too niche. So they somehow, they got older than me. And I went, I'll tell you what we can do. We can take adverts in the computing, get, you know, like um, PC format. And uh, it was Amiga format and ST Action. Uh, sorry, ST and Commodore Amiga. We can just take adverts for a few quid, see if anyone wants to buy them direct. <laughs> and it was hilarious because in my own way, I just sort of said, yeah, leave it with me. I'll sort that thinking, oh, yeah, it can't be, can't, can't be difficult. And basically, the advert said, if you want to buy this um, upgrade disc, which contains the Italian database and stuff, then just, you know, send, send it in, send your money in, and we'll send you a disc. And I said, they said, what do you think we'll sell me? And I said, who knows? We'll just take some ads. Knew a few of the ad sales people. They did a deal. And, like, soon after publication, the office that I had my, where, where I, my producer's business it, you know, literally the post office was ringing me saying, we've got a lot of stuff here for you. Um, we're bringing sacks of it around. And it was like, oh, fuck, what is all this? And it's like, it was just their audience reading the, the mags going, yeah, I'll have some of that. I think it was like 4 99 or something. Well, I was one of them. You know, so, and, and we were overwhelmed, right? <laughs> and I still don't know to this day whether Oven Paul actually got permission from IDOS to do that. Well, I don't know. But what was interesting was doing that proved to, to, uh, to Domark and became IDOS that there was a demand and suddenly they wanted to publish it. You know, they, they, they were yeah. the box. The, the Belgian League update didn't do as well <laughs> and, and ni neither did the Scandinavian one. But, oh, well. But the beauty of the Scandinavian one is um, that that actually opened our audience up in Scandinavia. And our, our tech director, a guy called Sven Ferny, um, ended up working in the studio. Having I was part of the community at that time. I was I was a modder on Championship Manager. I used to do a World League update for it that changed the whole game into a World Super League. And Sven, Sven taught me how to publish it online. There was someone else whose data editor I used to use, which was either Sven or, or Graham Kelly, that I used to use their data editor to make it. And they all ended up working in the studio. There was, there was, there was an IRC channel that we used to have called Hashtag Champman. IRC is it's basically called Discord now. Yeah, yeah, it's Discord, exactly. And it wasn't, and it wasn't cool in the 90s. Um, but loads of people from that channel have ended up working at the studio and, uh, you know, been there 20 plus years. Um, Mark Duffy is our dev director, used to do a website for Ovenpool when he was 14. I remember, I, I, I remember Mark joining the company and Mark's still there. It's fantastic to see.